You're watching Tag TV. Hello viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a program that talks about breeding of terrorism and its impact on South Asian nations. Let's begin with the headlines first. Anti-terror watchdog FATF keeps Pakistan under grey list. Deadly attacks by ISIS in Afghanistan pose security threat in South Asia. And Pakistan backed terrorists targeting minorities and no locals in Kashmir. Let's begin the show with Pakistan which holds an ignoble record of hosting the largest number of terrorists proscribed by the United Nations. The entire world has suffered because of its policies as the country nurtures terrorists in its backyard. However, recently the notorious South Asian country has suffered a major setback. In the meeting of the Financial Action Task Force, it has been decided that Pakistan will remain in the grey list for now. We have a report. In July 2019, Pakistani Prime Minister Imran Khan, on an official visit to the United States, acknowledged the presence of some 30,000 to 40,000 armed terrorists operating on Pakistani soil. This was not surprising. Pakistan's role as epicenter of terrorism has been well documented by numerous international organizations, including the United Nations. Time and again, Pakistan has been warned by these organizations on terror charges and on many occasions, Islamabad has been exposed globally on terror financing. In February, Pakistan was retained on the Financial Action Task Force grey list for failing to check money laundering. It was asked by the watchdog to investigate senior leaders and commanders of UN-designated terror groups. But Pakistan failed to do so. And now the watchdog at the end of October plenary has declared that Pakistan will remain under increased monitoring. Finally, regarding Pakistan, Pakistan remains under increased monitoring. The Pakistan government has two concurrent action plans with a total of 34 action plan items. Pakistan has taken a number of important steps but needs to further demonstrate that investigations and prosecutions are being pursued against the senior leadership of UN-designated terror groups. All these changes are about helping authorities prevent terrorism, stop corruption and prevent organized criminals from profiting from their crimes. Pakistan has been in the FATF grey list since June 2018 and it continues to be on the list as it failed to comply with the FATF criterion. Evidence shows that the Pakistani establishment is providing all kinds of technical and financial assistance to the global terrorist. The Pakistani army along with Pakistani intelligence agencies are involved in orchestrating terror attacks in neighboring countries including Afghanistan. The involvement of Pakistan's notorious spy agency ISI in overthrowing the democratic government in Afghanistan and its closeness with the Taliban and Haqqani network is being closely watched by the international community. Moreover, United States, a key FATF member, is also concerned over the acquittal of terrorists from Pakistani jails, including those involved in the abduction and murder of journalist Daniel Pearl. Therefore, it is expected that Pakistan will remain on the grey list of the FATF till April 2022, when the Global Money Laundering and Terror Financing Watchdog meets for its next session. पिछले एफएटीएफ के सेशन में शाह महमूद कुरैशी ने कहा था कि जी हमें हम डिजर्व नहीं करते ग्रे लिस्ट में रहना हमें निकाल दिया जाए ग्रे लिस्ट से हमने बड़ा काम किया है हमने टेररिज्म कंट्रोल किया है इसके बाद पाकिस्तान की टेररिज्म का एक एक्सेलेंट एग्जांपल दुनिया ने देखा कि 15 अगस्त को काबुल टेक होता है पाकिस्तान पैटर्नाइज पाकिस्तान ट्रेंड Pakistan financed Taliban ne, terrorist group ne, Afghanistan take over. Kar liya. Aur dunia mood 
Recent targeted attacks by Pakistan-backed terrorists in Jammu and Kashmir have also exposed ongoing link and support to state-sponsored terrorism by Islamabad. If Pakistan doesn't cooperate with FATF, it may have to face consequences in the long term. Now its close ally Turkey can also not help, as Ankara itself has been put on the FATF grey list. Islamabad needs to introspect and take decisive actions. The sooner, the better. Let's move to Afghanistan, where the recent bomb blast by Islamic State are raising the spectre of wider conflicts. The explosion come as the Taliban face the daunting task of governing a country shredded by four decades of war. Analysts now believe that a stronger and lethal Islamic State can influence events beyond Afghanistan and further destabilize the region. We take a look. With the return of Taliban's rule in Afghanistan, people in Afghanistan are scared of their rights and lives. The news of targeted killings and extrajudicial executions are coming every day from the country. A large number of Afghans have left the country, but for many poor citizens, crossing the border is not an easy option. They are compelled to struggle in their homeland, no matter what comes next. However, for them, the situation is becoming worse day by day, as a more brutal enemy is posing a threat to their lives. Militants of Islamic State have launched an offensive against civilians and minorities, killing them on a large scale. Recently, Islamic State suicide bombers attacked a Shia mosque packed with worshippers in Kandhar, killing at least 40 people. The attack came only a week after a similar bombing in Kunduz in northern Afghanistan. In both cases, Shia mosques were targeted during Friday services when hundreds of people were present. The newly installed Taliban government, having overthrown the country's Western-backed administration in August, is struggling to contain an invigorated Islamic State. The group has grown increasingly antagonistic in recent weeks, conducting guerrilla-style attacks and bombings. From large-scale suicide blasts to low-intensity targeted attacks on the Taliban, the Islamic State has stepped up in a big way. There is an overwhelming feeling among analysts and journalists covering Afghanistan that in the coming days, hardliners within the Taliban might switch over to the Islamic State. Experts for the field that Islamic State will take the role of major insurgent in Afghanistan, and this may once again attract a number of foreign fighters. Meanwhile, the Taliban is claiming that not recognizing the new government in Afghanistan is benefiting Islamic State. However, major countries in the world are still not in rush to recognize the Islamist group. We, uh находимся, как и большинство других влиятельных в этом регионе стран, в контакте, и мы побуждаем их выполнять те заявления, которые они сделали, когда пришли к власти. В том числе обеспечить инклюзивность правительства не только по этническому принципу, но и по принципу политических убеждений, чтобы весь спектр политических убеждений общества был отражен в составе правительства. И официальное признание пока не обсуждается, и об этом публично было сказано. Новый представитель Соединенных Штатов по Афганистану, господин Уэст, звонил вчера нашему представителю, господину Кабулову, выразил сожаление, что вот так все произошло, он буквально был накануне московского формата назначен, и сказал, что обязательно хочет вступить в контакт и приехать в Российскую Федерацию. Мы будем рады его видеть. To save their lives, many Afghans, who can afford, are attempting to cross the border. They are moving to neighboring countries as they see no future in Afghanistan. But the neighboring country, Pakistan, which facilitated Taliban takeover, has now closed its border for common Afghan people. People in Afghanistan are calling on Islamabad to open the border, at least on urgent humanitarian grounds but Pakistan has defended its move, saying it had by far 
taken the highest number of Afghan refugees. Meanwhile, reports of smugglers exploiting the situation and taking thousands of money from desperate Afghans have also come in. The border is the border of the border. 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 The rivalry between Islamic State and Taliban is now a major threat to peace in Afghanistan. Successive bomb attacks have left common Afghans feeling desperate. A fog of uncertainty looms over the country, and people are now struck between two brutal and violent forces. Amidst the improving security and social environment in India's Jammu and Kashmir, has come a phenomenon which is being perceived as a major challenge to the process of stabilization and peace. The unfortunate turn of events in the valley with the targeted killings of minorities and known locals has indeed upset the apple cart. Victims and experts now call for a strict action against the perpetrators. A report. A few days ago, terrorists in Kashmir killed two government teachers who were members of the minority communities. The incident evoked a lot of anger and outrage among the peace-loving people. But now, Pakistan-backed terrorists have gone one step ahead and started targeting non-local workers. Four laborers who belong to different states were shot dead by terrorists in separate attacks in the valley. The terrorist group believed to be behind the attacks is the Resistance Front, an offshoot of Lashkar-e-Taiba, which continues to enjoy safe haven across the border in Pakistan. Despite the significantly increased operations by security forces against Pakistan-backed Islamic terrorists, the attacks have created fear psychosis among the known locals in Kashmir Valley. The victim's family members are demanding action against the terrorist and its supporter, Pakistan. ये तो हमें घंटा वाले मालूम पड़ा है कि उनके गोली लग चुकी है, लेकिन जिसकी भी हाथ से वो गोली लगी है, उनको सक्सेस सक्सेस सजा सजा मिलनी चाहिए उनके उनके लिए, उन्हें सजा मिलनी चाहिए, और हमारे ये तीन बतीजी, चार बतीजी हैं, एक बेटा है, उनका हमारे भाई का, वो भी राजस्थान में काम करता है, � The victim's family members are demanding action against the terrorist and its supporter, Pakistan. In recent years, peace and development in the Kashmir Valley attracted many workers from states like Bihar, Jharkhand and Uttar Pradesh. They used to work in the construction, farm laborers and other development projects in the Union Territory. As a part of a wave of targeted killings of known locals, Pakistan-backed terrorists are attempting to create an atmosphere of fear among them. According to security officials, Pakistan is directing local militants to specifically target non-Muslims. All this has rattled Kashmir, uh, the uh, Pakistani establishment very badly because this gives a signal that Kashmir has become normal. And if this is so, then they have fear of backlash of their own people whom they have all these 70 years been lying and saying that Kashmir people are, want to come to Pakistan and they do not want to stay under Indian rule and they are being totally uh, pushed under the boots of the uh, security forces over there. After the abrogation of Article 370, most of the militant attacks in the valley have been claimed by the Resistance Front and the People's Anti-Fascist Front. The emergence of such kinds of outfits is to ensure the links of any big militant attack do not go back to Pakistan, or at least to the designated outfits. These militant outfits serve as the smoke and mirrors to conceal the activities of these outfits. Moreover, as an effort to secularize the jihad, these militant outfits have avoided religious symbolism in their titles, propaganda videos and statements. All the militants who were there, those gun-totting militants, 
who were there posing and giving their group photographs have been eliminated as of today. Now what is left is only the underground overground workers and some one some militant terrorists who have been recruited just recently two months three months back. Now what Pakistan wanted to do was since it was under the FATF watch list and also it had to now try to get out from being in the grey list. It sent in a message to all these people who were there, the rank and file of all the leftover terrorists over there to regroup and they formed a new name organization called the Resistance Front and also the other front that is over there. The modus operandi of terrorists in Kashmir Valley has made the task of security organizations extremely difficult. Experts believe pick-up and interrogation over ground workers besides full view and high energy domination operations by all forces can counter this newest Pakistan strategy. Over two decades of war in Afghanistan, Pakistan played a double game with the United States by promising to fight terrorism and cooperate with Washington while cultivating the Taliban and other extremist groups that attacked U.S. forces. Few days ago, U.S. senators demanded a probe into Pakistan's role in Taliban's victory. And now, a former U.S. national security adviser has raised his voice to hold Pakistan accountable. Our report. Afghanistan has been the topic of discussion the world over since 15 August. As Washington ponders how the U.S. lost its longest war in Afghanistan, it's worth considering another question. Who won the war? There is the Taliban, of course. But a bigger winner is the Taliban's primary patron, which is Pakistan. During the war, Pakistani military and intelligence services provided sanctuary, funding and training for the Taliban and its lethal terrorist group, the Haqqani Network. Strategic prudence demands that now when American troops have completed their exit, the Biden administration should hold the current Prime Minister accountable for some of its controversial remarks on Afghanistan in recent days. Recently speaking on Pakistan and its double standards on terrorism, former U.S. National Security Advisor Lieutenant General Mick Masters stated that any assistance provided to Pakistan should stop immediately. When the United States was present in Afghanistan battling the Taliban, United States knew what Pakistan was doing. But for those 20 odd years, the United States chose not to do anything. And there were uh, problems. What were the problems? That if you alienated Pakistan too much, then Pakistan's cooperation in allowing transit facilities for the Americans to Afghanistan would be blocked and they would become even more uncooperative. And given the fact that the Americans had also alienated the Russians, etc., uh, using the Central Asian route to, to send supplies to Afghanistan was also extremely difficult. Pakistan is at the receiving end of international criticism for its open support to the Taliban. Without Pakistan's intelligence and military establishment's unstinting support for the Taliban, the group would be a nuisance rather than an effective fighting force. The United States has steadfastly refused to do one thing it could have done long ago, targeted sanctions against those in Pakistan's deep state who sponsor Islamist militants. Washington remained convinced that Pakistan was too dangerous to sanction and US pundits rehearsed fears that Pakistan may collapse or sanction may provide nuclear weapons to terrorists. Islamabad took full advantage of such belief and it continued to use Islamist organizations to fuel terrorism in Afghanistan. However, to defend itself, it denies all the allegations that it has provided material logistical and intel support to the Taliban, claiming that it delivered what it was expected to deliver. In my opinion, this talk about nu Pakistani nuclear weaponry falling into the hands of the Taliban I think was always overblown, even the Americans knew that. If such a thing happens, it will happen with the active connivance and cooperation of the Pakistani authorities. 
so this particular talk is something that should be discouraged and pakistan should be told very clearly that if anything of this kind happens it will be seen to be an action taken by the pakistan authorities a deliberate action taken by the pakistan authorities and action will be taken accordingly given the gravity of the situation in afghanistan today it is absolutely essential for the international community to take action against countries like pakistan world leaders have the duty to the women and girls of afghanistan as well as to the entire generation raised in relative freedom to stop the thuggish brutality of the taliban and its tactics it can be achieved only after punishing those who are aiding the brutal regime And with that we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We will be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa@ani.com. This is Yeshi Chonson signing off on behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care.